Boy, I just put one of these exhaust fan covers on. It kicked my butt. It took me, oh, I don't know, about 10 tries because this wire needed to be rebent and adjusted on this one here. It was all flopping around and I kept bending it and bending it and back and forth I went. And uh, it's where a washer and dryer is. And that one just happens to be connected to this light. So every time you turn the light on, the exhaust fan comes on. That's kind of, that's kind of good. Okay, I don't know how yours is, but that's just how they happen to do this one. And that one's kind of rumbling. You hear it kind of rumble? Well, the innards and stuff is 15 years old. Later on down the road, if I want to take that innards out and maybe uh, replace the motor, I can. I don't have to rip out the entire exhaust fan and try to reinstall a new one. In fact, lots of times uh, another exhaust fan may be a slightly different size and if you can't get up in the attic and stuff, you know, it's kind of a pain. So you always want to try to take the innards out and then see if you can't remove the motor and uh, do all that. But that's not, that's actually not what this video is about. And if yours is fitting sloppy, by the way, just rebend this Rebend this wire out wider or tilt this. Sometimes this is just one angle. Well, this one happens to go up and then over like that. And I think that's just the way they made it. But anyways, you can you can bend those out wider. In case yours is flopping around, you can get it tighter. But what is this video about? Ah, yes. It's about the smoke alarm. I took the smoke alarms down when I painted the ceilings. It's always a good idea before you paint a ceiling, just take the smoke alarm down instead of masking around it and stuff. That way I got the roller right up in there. I didn't have to cut in around it and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I just left the, uh, uh, the harness, the wire harness in there. And I turned the power off. I'm going to turn the power off right now. Sometimes you can do this hot if you want. You pull that apart and leave the power on as long as you're careful with it, but I really would uh, recommend you turning the power off before you work on these, when you take them down, when you put them back up. Now this isn't all about how to install one from scratch. It's just how to reinstall this. How to reinstall this here. See this, the three little prongs. See those three prongs? And sometimes, believe it or not, if you're not paying attention, you might not get all three prongs plugged in there properly. And thinking you have it and then it doesn't go on gotta make sure you put those on if you want to watch me put this in I, in fact I got another one downstairs to do too they don't really take very long to put back up right on there okay stick around I'll show you okay I'm trying to squeeze by you here I've got the power off and that housing, I'm going to click on here, but the first thing I have to do is put this backing cover on. And the funny thing is, see this little harness here? Um, I know they replaced these smoke alarms once upon a time, because see that? Look at that. This is the old harness from the old smoke alarm. And then when they went to reinstall the new smoke alarm, they simply put the, poke the wires right up in where the other wires are. I didn't really know you could do that. And it seems to be fine. And I'm going to leave it. If you don't want to do that, usually what I do is I take the, I take the old harness out. I'll pull it down, take the wire nuts off, and then reinstall it and all that kind of stuff. You know, I really don't understand why they did that but it seems to work okay so the uh, mounting screws I left them up there and then you simply put it up there and twist it on see that's it and uh, just tighten it up and I just make them snug and I do it with the hand screwdriver I don't like using my power screwdriver up here I'm just gonna make it Snug. You want it. You want it tight enough so it's not going to move around when you twist this thing on there, but not so tight. 
that it sucks this up really super far. Okay. And you now I gotta be mindful of where those are. And so I'm gonna have to reposition my ladder just to just to make sure I got all these prongs in there properly. Okay. Make sure it snaps. There's a definite snap on there. And this one, I just have to find a happy medium where I can push it all the way up tight and then I'm going to turn it righty tighty, lefty loosey. There. And you know what? When I did that, my uh, trim moved. And let's, I just want to see if I can get this back off. Uh, there. There's a, there's a little side goodie here that you can slide. I'm going to pull this back off. I'm going to pull it back off. There's a little deal here when you want to loosen it, you got to kind of press that in. And I'm just going to tighten this up just a hair more. Because when I twisted that, it wanted to slide. You saw? Okay. So I want to just make this a little tighter. All right, I think that's going to work fine. And the, the other thing on this too, this, let's talk about this uh, smoke alarm before I put it up there. Because uh, I think I'm going to write the date on it. Um, I know this smoke alarm has been installed after the old smoke alarm and I know this condo is 15 years old and this particular type of smoke alarm has lithium batteries in there once you once you tighten it and click it the first time the battery activates automatically and you can never shut it off and it's supposed to be designed uh, to stay on for 10 years if you take this off to repaint this little green lights gonna stay on uh, pretty much the whole time and uh, see, well, I just saw it. I just saw it flash because there's a battery. The lithium battery's in here. This will go on for 10 years. And see, when you install one of these, see there it says replace by, and then you're supposed to put in your own date. Now, sometimes they have installed on and then replace by. This one only has replace by. And so I'm going to put a date on there because I think. I happen to think that I'm not going to remember years down the road when I think I should replace this. Now, most smoke alarm batteries uh, and smoke alarms should, most smoke alarm bodies, let's say, this whole thing should be replaced every 10 years. Did you know that? The manufacturer suggested, suggest, and I believe they recommend you replace the whole smoke alarm, even if the smoke alarm is still working. Okay? And so, I know this condo was built in 2005, and it's 2021 now. And so the, the old smoke alarms probably got replaced 10 years in, so probably about five years ago. Uh, this is the first part of 2021, so about five years ago, they probably installed these. That's what, I, I'm gonna make the, the educated guess this smoke alarm right here is about five years old, okay? So I'm gonna put a date on here, replaced by, uh, I might put uh, March of 21. I'll put 3, 321 on there before I put it up. And then I'll just remember, I'm only gonna do that on this one here. I don't necessarily have to get up on, on uh, a big old tall ladder uh, to date the other ones. In fact, look at this one up, look, look at this one up here way up there see it way up there it's about oh i don't know 14 feet up you can't get to it unless you're on an extension ladder that's kind of crappy why would they why would they do that i mean if it was me i would have been i would have installed that down on the wall maybe or move it downhill a little bit so that you could get to it with an eight foot ladder easily um maybe put it on that sidewall facing that way in about 
uh, three feet down on that wall. That, that would have been plenty, you know? Instead they, instead, they stuck it way up high. And then in the bedroom, here's the master. Here's the master bedroom. This is just a, just a little condo, believe it or not. Hey, it's not Christmas. Uh, mommy just likes to, to have a Christmas tree on. And uh, it's quite soothing, actually. <laughs> See that one? Way up there. You got to get up on that ledge and then stand there tippy toe and get up there and and all that good stuff. You know, they could have put it on the sidewall down a little bit so that you could just get up on an eight foot ladder, reach over and voila. But they didn't. And so I, I'm not going to I'm not going to get up there. I'm going to have to re I'm going to have to reset these uh, smoke alarms after I turn these other ones on. Did you know each time you mess around with the smoke alarm, you're supposed to reset everything when you turn the uh, breaker back on. I believe when you turn the breaker on you're supposed to reset all of the smoke alarms that you have because you've turned the power off. And so now you've got to reset it. Not only do you have to reset the one that you're installing, then it's recommended that you reset all of the existing ones that you have because if you don't reset it, maybe, possibly, your smoke alarm will not go off when it's supposed to go off. Okay? Very important point. Remember that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna date this and then I'll be right back to you. We'll pop that back up there again. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't write it very well, but I'll know. I'll know that in uh, the year 2025. I gotta replace that. And if you want where the date is, you can put the date and this stamp facing uh, the door or something like that if you want when you get it back up here oh, make sure I get this right okay there we go oh, I'm gonna hold it right there turn it to the right and then I I can hear it kind of click in. Da, 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 da. Now, when you do a brand new one, that clicks in and then it starts the battery. Well, this battery has already been started before, so it didn't it did not click in, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put in another one downstairs uh, from repainting. I just hadn't done it yet. And so I'll show you that one very quickly. Then I'm going to turn the breaker back on. I'm going to turn the breaker back on and then I'm going to retest all of these. You might want to see that if you've never tested your smoke alarms before and I've got a few more important things to say after that so you might want to watch the rest of this video. See I told you I had another one to do right here by the uh, bathroom downstairs close to the kitchen this one right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke that one back up here. Let's just see. And uh, this one, you see they, they've got that housing up there again, a double housing. <laughs> I call it a housing uh, uh, double harness. See, that's the new harness. Well, that one is for the smoke alarm. And see, that was the old harness up there for the old smoke alarm that got replaced at least five years ago. Lucky for them there was enough room to just shove that up there, but I, like I say, I just never do that. I'm just very uh, amazed that they left that, and I'm gonna leave it. The smoke alarm seemed to be doing okay, and if it's not broke, why fix it, right? And, uh, you know, I could decide to uh, take the harness out and all that kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm deciding against it this time. I don't know why, I'm just not going to do it this time. Okay, so... <laughs> That's funny, I, I know the power's off, but I still... I still get a little itchy when I'm working on with electrical and stuff. Okay, where's that other one? Okay, there it is. Oh, come on. Oh, I see. I'm on the wrong one. Uh, the smoke alarms, they give you 
they give you uh, lots of different options for sizes. One, two, three different size boxes this cover will fit on. You just got to make sure you get it on the right box, uh, the right mounting. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that's right. I think what happened, uh, I'm going to have to uh, get a washer or something and uh, put on that screw because on this mounting bracket, whoever Whoever installed it last, let's, let's look at this thing here. You see all the different sizes? You, you, put, you put the screw through that. That way you can install the two screws up there and let them hang. And then you swivel it to whichever uh, side. And see there's a little dimple where the screw head goes. See? There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. And there's supposed to be one right there. And that's just where this, where it happens to land. And look at that, it got snapped out. I mean, I could, I could, I could adjust this slightly and fit it in there and right there if I really wanted to. Well, I'm gonna see if I got a little washer or something that'll cover that so that I can do it right. I mean, there's always two ways to do things, right? I could slide it slightly over and then use that little bit there. But we'll see. I'm going to see if I can find a washer really quick for that. And if that'll work, that's what I'm going to do. Now see, I'm going to use this right here. It's not a proper washer. You see it's round on the side when I'm pinching it. And then it's, and then it's square. See that? But look, it's going to fit right over that. And I can use that and it won't go in there. Now where did I get this? If you've been watching my videos, you would know where I got that off of an old electrical outlet duplex re receptacle. Uh, I was throwing away and I cut the tabs off and bent the tabs off because I can use those as washers. Do you remember I was saying that? Well, here, here I am using one as a washer. And so uh, I got to take that mounting screw out. I'll take that mounting screw out. Uh, and I think I've got to take the whole thing out so that I can put that washer up there. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that and be right back with you. I figured I might as well show it to you. Uh, Sometimes people like to see everything I do. Other people don't like to see everything I do. I took, the, I took that one screw out. I'm going to take the other side out too for a reason. And I'm going to tell you why whoever installed this before, they use, they use drywall screws. And they use gold drywall screws. And lots of times these gold screws I can use these gold screws for, for exterior use or any time I need to use a gold screw. Let's say, let's say I'm installing a door strike plate or there's an existing door strike plate and one of the screws is loose. Well, I could take a gold screw if I had any, and now I do. I could take a gold screw and put it in there and drive it in further and maybe get it into the wood backing uh, the the two by four back in there and see this is just this is just paint that'll flake off See on the top Like that I could clean that screw off and I could use those two screws those happen to be inch and five-eighths long and I don't need inch and five-eighths long screws up there. I can get by with just two inch and a quarter long screws coarse thread drywall screws and that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to save those gold ones for something else. <laughs> that's just how I am. Whenever I can kind of repurpose something I will and uh, you know inch and quarter screws I use those all the time and you can get so many more of those and a box of screws than inch and five eighths and I can use these up here that'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm going to set that one up 
like that. And I'm hoping this little washer, the screw will go through it, and sure enough it does. And now I can, I can get this back up there, reposition it where it's gonna go, and hold this up there and put this screw in. And voila, I've got it fixed by Joe. All with a little slight know-how. Okay, and now I can tighten that up. Just fine, just fine. I don't know how they broke that back. They screwed it in too far is what happened. nice and, and make sure that all those wires look nice and tight on the back side of that first harness okay and you know when I go through this if I wasn't videoing it of course I would exactly the same exact mundo make sure it's snapped in there hold it up there and I've got to position it in such a manner where I know that the edges are fitting up tight and there it is right there now I'm going to turn it to the right and it's going to go da, 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 da. and I can I can feel it I can feel it when it did that and it's up there and you want to make sure before you start tightening it that everything is up tight first before you tighten it because if you don't and you think oh I got I got this one side you don't feel it properly you can start tightening it up and it's not going to tighten all the way and you look over here and it's like son of a gun this side's not up flush like everything else now this one is flush it looks good and we've got to reset these okay I'm going to reset these it's very simple to reset uh, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the uh, camera I'm gonna keep the camera going, I guess. And uh, see, I turned I turned this breaker off. It just happens to be on a 20 amp circuit, and see, it says alarm smoke. I turn that on. If that were a trip, then I would know. Oh, uh -oh one of the wires got loose, or something like that. And now, oh, I've got to. Uh, oh yeah, I got my. I'm going to take my paint extension pole. I was wondering where that was. It's out here in the garage. That's right. I forgot about that. See, I still, I still have to paint uh, the garage ceiling and the walls and stuff. But we're just get, getting moved into this condo. And so I'm going to take this extension pole. And I'm going to use that to reset these with. Okay. And... Um, very simple to do. So I got the power back on, and now you, you'll see that the green, see there, you got the green light, continuous green light. You might think that the smoke alarms are all working properly. Well, no, you got to reset them. So I'm just going to take my extension pole, and I'm just going to press the button. There's a button, that big thing right there. I'm just going to press it once. Now it's going to start chirping. Let's see here. Come on. I have to put there it goes. Hey, that's how most that's how most reset themselves. Some loud bursts and that kind of thing. Now I'm gonna go upstairs and um, set the other ones. Now the funny thing with this condo, this is the only one downstairs, okay? And usually what they require, what they recommend, and I'm surprised that smoke alarm is not, and see, whoever, whoever installed that one maybe five years ago, maybe they didn't know this, and maybe you don't either. But anytime you're downstairs and you're close to the kitchen, and if you have any gas appliances, we happen to have, we're gonna have a stove here and it's gonna be hooked up to the gas. Anytime you have a gas appliance, you're supposed to have a combination smoke alarm, carbon monoxide uh, alarm, okay? And so you're supposed to have two. And I notice 
that this one is not. I wasn't 100% sure until I was going to reset that because if it was carbon monoxide and smoke, I would have gotten um, all those loud bursts and then it would have said carbon monoxide. And then the next time it would go through a whole thing and then it would say fire or it would do something so that you would know that it's a combination. Well, this one doesn't have that. And I think there's another one in the condo that is and uh, you keep watching this video and uh, I'll show you where it's at. I'll show you where it's at. I'm pretty sure it is. And it's in, in an odd location. I see we're co coming up here and you're just supposed to have smoke alarms in the bedrooms. And this is the one that I had just installed. And, uh, uh, okay. I'm gonna press the button. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that one's fine. And remember I've got that one way up high. How on earth am I gonna get that? Well, that's why I've got my, my little uh, uh, extension pole. And that extension pole extends up to eight feet. And I think I can reach it. I think I can reach it with that. I've got to get my little step ladder. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to get my, uh, my big, I got an eight foot ladder downstairs. Just bear with me. I'm going to let the camera go. I'm getting my little three foot ladder down here. And I'm gonna see, I think I can reach it. I'm not, like I say, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I can. Remember, uh, if you were with me and saw me rolling, painting these ceilings, you would have seen me get up on that and, and try to reach that. And so, see, I'm gonna take this extension. I'm gonna take this, and this is a extended one. See, I got it up that, see there? I got it that tall, and I'm gonna get up there, and I think I can just barely reach this, and all I have to do is press that button up there, let's see if I can. And if yours is at more of an angle, you could put some masking tape upside down on the end of this pole. Look at that, I can reach it. Come on. Okay, so now I know that one's reset. Okay, yes, it's very important you do this every time you turn the breaker off. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm gonna get up in here. I think I can reach that one fine. I'm gonna bring my extension. Uh, pull in here, my little ladder, and see that one's kind of at, a, at a, an angle away from where I'm going to be standing, but I think I can reach it okay. If it was any more of an angle, I could put some, uh, some masking tape upside down on the end of my pole and then wrap some more masking tape around it so that the masking tape would kind of be sticky and then it wouldn't slide off to where I can push that button. Okay, but I'm pretty sure I can push the button. We'll, we'll see. Okay. There we go. Look at that. Come on, here we go. Okay, now I'm pretty sure that's all the ones in the house, but I've got another one right here inside this little area, and uh, we got a, a tankless water heater up here, and we also have a heater. The heater's up here, and that's just how they decided they had to do it for this condo. Isn't that funny? We've got this in Hey, master bedroom. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. 
but hey, whatever rocks and floats your boat, their boat. And uh, I'm gonna get up in here because see there, look at that. There's a smoke alarm up here. And I'm pretty sure this one is the carbon monoxide and fire, okay? Because see, here's the heater is over here. And this is the tankless water system we just installed. We used to have a 40 gallon water heater right there, but it's just very minuscule for a little condo, okay? Now I'm gonna press this, and now you listen to it. It should say, it should have the lady coming on and talking, and she's, I think she's gonna say something about carbon monoxide and fire. Let's listen. Carbon monoxide. There you go. See the first the first one when it went off it said fire. And then it went through another sequence and it said carbon monoxide. So I know this one is carbon monoxide and fire smoke alarm because this is gas. It's hooked up to gas. We know that because here's the gas pipe. Here's the valve for the gas and the gas is usually run in the black pipe. And then you run over here and sure enough the water the tankless water system is on gas uh, so anytime you have gas appliances or equipment you've got to have or it's recommended to have a smoke alarm and also the carbon monoxide one because the carbon monoxide one you know you can't really smell that you could be downstairs wherever and uh, people have died from in their sleep if you have a carbon monoxide leak so it's always good to have that so guess what that means you know that one that one uh, in the hallway downstairs by the kitchen I'm gonna have to replace that with a new one that is smoke and carbon monoxide and it's hooked up to the power and so when I go to the store those are kind of expensive but hey you got to do what you got to do right and it's got a back, it'll have a backup battery. It'll have the smoke alarm. It'll also have the, the carbon monoxide and it will be hardwired. And so when I get that on that one downstairs, I'm gonna replace it, okay? But for the meanwhile, I know that at least I'm protected downstairs for smoke. In case anything goes off, I've got that. Now, I just, I just went through that rigmarole to fix that, didn't I? And um, with the washer and stuff, when I pull that off, I, I guess I could save that uh, in case I need it in the future, in the near future, or anything like that. And guess what that also means? When I turn the power back off to install that smoke alarm, that means I'm gonna have to reset all the other ones too. That's okay. And I've seen some people um, I've done it before where uh, maybe I'm inside a condo and I don't know where the breaker is. Maybe there's no breaker where you're at. Maybe uh, uh, you're in an apartment complex. You don't have a sub panel in your, uh, or you don't know where your sub panel is or something. I've seen people do it and, and you can do it. If you're careful, you take one wire nut off, take the black, black one off and then do the black. Then take the red one off, then do the red, then do the white one or whatever. But I would... Again, I'm not really trying to tell you to do something that's against uh, safety practices. It, it's always best to turn your breaker off. And in your sub panel, uh, not always will it say smoke alarm. It might be on, a, on, on a lights or elect, uh, duplex electrical outlets, uh, family room, living room. You never know. Exterior lights or exterior GFI. Uh, you just don't know and so if you can't find it you're gonna have to flip them off one at a time make sure you get the right one before you work on it okay all right there you go well that's all I have for this time but I'll be back with more videos well, I could mark that off my list for now 
Next time I go to the store, yep, I'm going to get a new carbon monoxide smoke alarm. But what is our project today? Ah, oh, the dreaded bathroom. <laughs> I used to say my favorite place, the bathroom. <laughs> okay, we've got a bathtub here. I've got the uh, inspection cover off. And that cover happens to come off. Why? Because this is a jacuzzi type bathtub with the push button and it's got all the jacuzzi things. It's got the, the motor down in here and all that good stuff. And that, that was leaking before. I've, I, I've finally identified the leak and I want to talk to you about that and we're going to fix this leak. And uh, that is what this particular video is about. You want to watch that? Stick around. Do you know, the other day, I combed YouTube to find out if anybody had a jacuzzi tub such as this one here because it's got this little pipe extension here, okay? It wasn't hooked up to anything. It's coming off, it's coming off down here where the suction uh, area is that sucks the water and air out well, the water out and throws it to all the different types of uh, uh, nozzles. And this was coming off it, and it's got this little tiny connection, and there's no, I can't find any place where this connection is supposed to go. And I think, I think this is called a check valve. Now, I'm not 100% sure on that but you would think and and I started reading and I saw a couple different YouTube videos and they were talking about check valves and stuff but all of their stuff was all interconnected with everything they didn't have a pipe a, a little pipe like this that went to nowhere and this was dripping drip 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 inside the wall and then it dripped out it finally came out down by the stairs and I've got a whole video series about that. This is probably one of the end ones for that. And I thought, okay, how can I fix this? I thought, no sense. You know, I could go the extra mile and call up a plumbing company and ask them, or somebody who specializes in, in jacuzzi tubs, ask them about this over the phone. Maybe I could get an answer over the phone or take this off, go to a wholesale plumbing house and all that kind of stuff and find out, hey, what's the deal with that? And still, I wouldn't be 100% sure if this would ever leak again. And if, it, and if it's something in here that's designed to uh, not leak, it's like, what, what on earth is this for if this doesn't get connected to anything? Why even have it here at all? Okay, so I thought, I'm just going to kink this off. I could kink it off like that, put some tape around it. But then I thought, hey, this is almost the same size. And um, I thought... It's almost the same size as a uh, landscaping pipe. And you know what? I'm not sure if it is or not, because I've got just a little, I got just a little end cap for sprinklers, and that's for quarter inch tubing. I'm not sure if that's quarter inch tubing or not. But I'm what I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off and it's not gonna leak right now because there's no water in the tub or anything. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut this off. I was going to do this the other night and I thought, nah, I probably should make a video of it. And see, I can put, I can plug that little thing in right like that. It looks like it's just a hair, just a hair loose. Because see, this pipe is probably, I'm going to guess it's, uh, it's not quarter inch. I'm going to guess it's, uh, oh, I don't know. It's, I don't think it's five sixteenths. But... See, I can pull that out too easily. I could probably put that in, put some tape over that and stuff, but I probably should go to the store and see if I can't get something that's proper. You know what I mean? That's just too loose. That's going to be too loose. And I can also pinch it off and wrap some tape around it. I think that's what I'm going to do too. I'm going to leave this thing off. I'm going to probably take this to the store with me as well. Uh, maybe I'll just cut a little a little piece off so I can 
so I can look and see what size that is. I'm going to take this all to the store. In the meanwhile, see, I'm not liking that. And you know, you know what? It's got this other end. I think I can, I think I can use that. See, this has, this has, this usually you put on, usually you'll put that in the pipe. Or uh, you, you poke a hole and um, you would have a fitting about that size that went into a 5 eighths or half inch and then you would have, uh, you can connect pipes or if you want to cap one off, you would just push that in there, see? And that fits in the quarter inch tubing too, but I think I can, I think I can take my pliers and just push that whole thing in here. Get a little spit in there. Twist it on there. Look at that. Look at that. I'm liking that. I think I can... I think that'll do it. Bye, Joe. Look at that. I don't think that's ever going to come off. See there? I just put it on upside down. And the... This just comes out, it, it doesn't spray out, it drips out. And so I think that is gonna be okay. And um, I could put electrical tape around that and stuff, but, but uh, I think what I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, how, how, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do that? I had it, I had it kind of wrapped around here before. Somehow, oh, I think it was this way. And, ah, <laughs> see, it's not going to hold now because I don't have the end on. Just tie it up in here like that. There, like that. Okay, I can just leave it like that. And then when I, when I take the next bath, we'll turn it on and we'll also run the jets and everything. I doubt very seriously that's ever going to leak. Okay, now, whether or not the check valve should be on there or not, maybe, uh, I think the tub is still going to work fine. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, use it and try it and stuff. In the meanwhile, maybe I can do some more investigating on this. If you know what this check valve is and if you know why it wasn't connected to anything and if you know that that is supposed to be on there, maybe you could let me know that, hey, Video Joe, you need to have that check valve. Maybe, maybe the air goes in here and then the water goes in or something circulates in this little area here and then goes back out or some, or it just allows air to come out at first but not water. I have no idea. But this was not connected to anything. I could not find any areas on here. Nothing else was dripping or anything where this could have been possibly connected to, but I don't, I don't see anything that this connects to or anything. I'll do some more research on that, but this is how I'm gonna leave it for now. And um, when, I take a, when I take a bath, I can, I can push that back down into my bucket. I can, I can leave my bucket out here and all that and uh, make sure 100% that it's not gonna drip, show Momi because uh, she's all concerned that she can't use the jets and all that and, and I want her to know that this is not going to drip then I can put the cover back on there we can rest assured it's not going to drip it's not going to leak I could put some I could put some tape around that to make sure it never wants to come off that was hard to push on there trust me and I had to do it using my pliers and stuff and, and pushing and twisting and I think it's going to be fine. Now the check valve, I, when I was reading about a check valve, uh, what was it saying? It, it would, uh, if you didn't have one, maybe your tub would cycle improperly or do a cycle loop or something. I, I don't know. I'm not really a plumber. I know how to fix certain things and different things, but I, for the life of me, I could not find a tub like this that was hooked up exactly like this with this check valve just dangling in the air. I looked for, oh, I don't know, an hour on YouTube. I found all kinds of other different ones, but I didn't find anything like this. 
And so I'll, I'll do a little bit more checking. And incidentally, we're in a condo complex and we were talking to some of the neighbors and two different neighbors over the years have had problems with their, with their tubs dripping and it was because this thing was dripping in there and one, <laughs> it actually went down into the first floor, came out of a light fixture uh, in the ceiling downstairs and um, it, this went on for a while. They looked at it, made a determination. They had dry rot up in the ceiling. They had floor joists that were all dry rotted and all kinds of stuff. They had to tear the sheetrock out, replace some wood ceiling joists and do some other stuff in there. Funky because this thing was dripping down in the wall. Drip, 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 drip. And, and you don't really hear it because this thing was set right down on the bottom plate. So we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have found it. We took five or six baths before it actually dripped out about, oh, I don't know, 15, 15 feet away from here, straight across underneath this floor, underneath this tile, across the, uh, over to the uh, stairwell. And then it was dripping out of the ceiling of the stairwell of the edge of the ceiling. And it was running and, you know, it took that long for the water to get down in here for the first night. Then it went a little further the next night and then it went a little further. And we're talking quite a bit of water. Um, when, when I had this bucket, when I had this bucket here and, and we would run it, I could hear it dripping in here and sometimes it would drip fast, sometimes it would go slow, sometimes it wouldn't drip at all. And um, after a bath, 15 minutes, I had yay, yay much water in the bottom of this bucket. And you know, maybe a uh, half a gallon of water. But if I was taking a longer tub, maybe uh, up to three quarters to a gallon of water, that could be dripping out of this little pipe, you know? So, hey, if you have, if you have an issue, if you have any issue with your, with your um, jacuzzi tub, look around, check around, watch this whole series and, and see all the different things that I, that I looked at, that I was inspecting downstairs, that I was thinking about having to cut ceilings out. I'm so glad I didn't start cutting the kitchen ceiling or the uh, bathroom ceiling or in the garage ceiling to get over to the bathroom ceiling downstairs and all that kind of good stuff because it's only this and that was the culprit. So, you know, you, if you ever have a problem, an issue with your tub, with your jacuzzi tub leaking, look for a pipe like this and if you have a little check valve like this at the end, maybe it's not leaking when you look at it, but run your tub and um, see if it drips out of this. You might be surprised. It could be that before you, before you rip apart the wall to, to, uh, to check and see if it's leaking somewhere else, the overflow valve or the drain or something like that, look around. And if it's a check valve, it might be an easy fix. All right, I've talked enough. This is it for this time. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you on the next video. Oh, and speaking of the next video, what is the next video going to be? Well, it just might have something to do with this. What is that anyways? It has to do with a sink. All right. If you want to know how to fix a leaking sink and a pop-up valve. Stick around. Oh, that's funny. I put the Listerine in there to remind myself not to turn that water on because it was dripping, drip, 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 and pouring out underneath the sink. So actually, I turned the valves off underneath the sink, so I don't need that anymore. And have you ever seen, this is, this is your little plunger thing, that fits down in here underneath and with a nut. See, it, 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 it comes actually like this. This is the replacement part that I got. And it's for the stopper. You take your, your stopper, and I happen to have the old one here. See? And this has a hole that fits in there, down underneath there. And then you've got a nut that holds that on. And then this part fits for your your extension over here and then it hooks on with that little spring-loaded goodie 
and I still have the spring loaded good in. I went to the store to find one of these. I have never in all my years seen one so bad. It rusted this off and it actually ate the end off. See, the end is supposed to be about that long. And this one, son of a gun, it matched up perfectly. So that's why I got this one here. And this condo is only 15 years old. And this had to have happened within the, the first seven, eight years. I have no idea how you could eat through this, you know. But I, when I went to the store, I didn't, I didn't quite know if I would be able to find one that matched exactly. But I did. I did. And I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to use this, this nut or, or this. See, this, this is that spring-loaded deal that slides on there and lots of times you, you may only need one of these if you've lost yours did you know some stores you can buy just that believe it or not okay and so that will fit in there like that and then you, you've got a nut down there that tightens up and then you can get that adjusted right put this on that other rod that's down there that has all the holes in it and um, you would put one on here and then you put it through the rod and then you would t you would bend this you know twist it up and then put it there and the rod you know like that and the rods gonna be in between there and it's a little trial and error you just have to try a couple different times uh, to get your your uh, valve adjusted right because you want it up high enough when it's closed so that the water can still go down there and see some of these look at this it's got a rubber washer on there and and they got all different ones I don't know if this unscrews it might and I don't think I'm gonna mess with it it might not unscrew some unscrew and some unscrew the opposite direction and some have an o-ring area yeah you they got all kinds all kinds of these and and you know, if you can't find the right one that you need, I should have gotten the other one too, just to show you, but they had another pack like this, and it was universal. It had, it had three uh, different little balls like this, one smaller, one bigger than that, and one this size. And then you would take the end, take the end off and then push it back on, uh, and it was pl plastic, and then the thread, and then this extension piece was plastic. You know, so, so, uh, because not one size will fit everything, all right? And so that's how I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Now, when this thing, when this thing ripped off, it was actually ripped off in this sink over here. Mommy was having a fit because she couldn't use that because when she did her, does her contact lenses, she was afraid she was going to drop her contact lens down there. So I took the, I took the good one of this over on this sink and put it over on her sink and you know mine wouldn't have leaked had I have left this in and put the nut on there uh, this wouldn't have worked obviously and then just leave this out because that wouldn't have worked that would have been down tight but I could have just left that in there and it would still work and it wouldn't leak all over the place but I pulled this out because I was going to take it to the store then I put the nut back on and on the back side when I turn this on it would just keep dripping really super fast. It would hit just right and whoosh, and go out there and got everything wet underneath the sink. I should have known better. But hey, I went. Uh, that's why I shut the water off down down below. And, and, and I thought, you know, even on the nut, if I didn't want to have that on there, I thought, wait a minute, I could take the nut and take a plastic bit, cut it with some tin snips, fit it in there. And so there's a plastic shield in there, you know, like the... The uh, uh, a mayonnaise jar, uh, you know that heavy plastic or like a peanut butter jar, an empty peanut butter jar. Take the plastic and and cut that and then shove it in there. Screw that back on there and voila, you've got it fixed for the time being until you get another one. I could have done that, but it was only it was only for a night, and so that's why I left this one out. Or you just leave this old one in there and uh, keep the nut tight on there, and then. The day you go to the store, just remember not to run your water because if you got stuff under there like Kleenex boxes or any uh, 
paper or or your towels or anything like that it's all going to get wet under there if you turn turn your sink back on remember that okay so i'm going to get ready to go ahead and replace this i I'm, i might show you a little bit but it's really cramped down in there and it's going to be virtually impossible for me to uh, run the video camera as i'm down there trying to do the work so i'll i'll show you a little bit on that um, a couple times I got to pull the camera off and not not set it on the uh, tripod or anything like that so you get the gist because you know you don't have to call a plumber you can do these different odds and ends on your own and incidentally talking about plumbing I got all kinds of videos on my channel go to my main YouTube channel page and click on playlists and then scroll down to plumbing plumbing repairs bathroom repairs uh, plumbing new and old repairs or you know something about plumbing click on there and scroll through all the many videos any any sort of plumbing video I've ever posted to this particular YouTube channel you will find there and it could help you out why pay a plumber when lots of things you can do yourself you know they probably charge you 85 85 dollars an hour or more and if they come out and you know, if they come out for this and, and, and you, your sink was wet underneath down in the cabinet and you didn't want to look at it, maybe it was just this. And you watch this particular video and you save yourself because you're going to call a plumber. Before the plumber steps into your door, it's probably going to cost you $125 for his visit, for his, his trip charge, for his van charge, for his employee charge and all that kind of stuff. Before, maybe that gives you 15 minutes. And if he can't fix it in 15 minutes, then you get charged per half hour or whatever it is. For, for something like this, be, be prepared to spend $125 or up to uh, maybe $175 because he's going to charge you for the part too. And guess what? He's going to mark that up 100% too. And, uh, you know, save your money on some of the things for plumbing. I know you can do it yourself. See, even this, this should fit on most, but it doesn't. This one is a little bit bigger in diameter than this one. The threads are still about the same, but this one's bigger, so I've got to use that one, and that's fine. It's even got the little thumb turns on there. I'm using that, okay? So some sinks this will fit on, others it won't. So before you start throwing all your parts away, you know, go to the store, get your parts, come back, and you might have to reuse things and and sometimes the threads on this down there if they drip uh, you can always wrap it with uh, Teflon tape I'm not gonna wrap mine with tef Teflon tape I don't think I do have some Teflon tape though I might I might but it's it's designed that you shouldn't have to when this gets pushed up in there you got plastic rubbing on plastic and when you tighten that up it gives yourself a nice tight friction on the back side and it really shouldn't tighten up or really should tighten up without without using Teflon tape but if you have some Teflon tape and if you think you need to use it go ahead and use it make sure you put it on the right direction there's always a right and wrong way to do everything even when you're installing Teflon tape it took me a few minutes to get this fixed but you know, I'm just I'm just uh, letting water run, and then I'm checking underneath the sink to make sure it's not leaking. I did put some Teflon tape on there, and these threads, because these threads are so fine, you got to hold your mouth just right because you're up in there kind of cattywampus and backwards and stuff. As you're tightening it, you've got to hold your mouth just right. You want to make sure you don't cross-thread that onto the nipple back there. And uh, see when I pull that, the water's the water's holding in there in the sink, and that's what you want. Um, you know, if you're shaving or if you're washing uh, fine lin linen stuff or or fine things like a like some sort of woman's uh, lingerie or top or something that you want to that you want to uh, 
have that. And see how I got it? I got it up, I got it up kinda, kinda up sorta high. You don't, you don't want this, and see, I, I fished, I had to fish that little thing in there to keep that so it's not popping up. You don't want that, when you have it fully opened, you don't want it fully open to about there because then um, lots of times you have to kind of jiggle this around or you get a little bit of hair in there and it's going to start plugging up. When it's open all the way, you want it up kind of, kind of high. You know, I, when I, when I adjust Momi, see I got hers up kind of high too. See? And when you pull it down, it's fine. Okay? That's about, that's about how you want it. All right? And so I'm going to run it a little bit more, and um, I'm just I'm just making sure that the that the threads that it's not dripping down there. I'm going to take you off the tripod here for a minute and uh, get you down underneath the sink. I'm just going to leave that on. And see, there's the. There's the rod. When the rod gets stuck in there, see how I, see how I hooked it on that V-shaped deal on there, and I put the I put the uh, uh, the Teflon tape on these threads. You want to put the Teflon tape around in the same direction that you're going to tighten it up. If you put the Teflon tape on there, the opposite, as you're tightening this up, it's actually loosening up the Teflon tape. You don't want that. And then I'm just going to. I'm just going to shine my uh, uh, my flashlight or my phone down in here after a while, feel on there and make sure there's there's no wetness or anything like that, okay? And I think I got it. Bye, Joe. No plumber necessary. I probably just saved myself 175 bucks for doing it myself. Uh, yeah, I had to go to the store. To Home Depot, but now I got now I got a few parts. I got this little piece. I'm not throwing that away. I never know when I'm going to use that for somebody else's sink. And this, of course, this is throwaway now. Okay, and I can I can uh, save those for next time. And I saved myself probably 175 bucks. Went to the store. Took me 15 minutes at the store. And it took me probably 15 minutes to fix this. So a half an hour, and I got all that money left in my pocket. What am I going to do with it now? <laughs> yeah, I'm still running that and testing it. Just because I'm not running the video camera doesn't mean I'm doing the same thing I told you I would. And see, here's the container. I'm not going to throw that away. This is a nice little box I can save for different things. Here, I got a little... Check valve. I've got to, I've got to uh, investigate into that, and a little piece of tubing for my uh, jacuzzi tub that was leaking that I got fixed. But I'm going to still check it out. Here's my little parts for that. I can throw miscellaneous screws in there and all kinds of stuff, and I can just store that on my shelf. Yeah, repurpose, baby. Here's the last little tip I'm going to share with you on this. When you're tightening up that small little nut back up in here, there's a fine line with how tight you want to do it. If you make it too tight, you might find that it's hard to adjust this rod with your pole back here. Pull it up and down. Um, you get it too tight, maybe it doesn't work properly. But then again, if you get it too loose, you could start dripping water out of the back side of that. That's why I'm letting this run for three or four minutes. If you got any water down here at all, then you can take your pliers and, and tighten this up about a quarter turn. Okay? And then check it again. Dry it all up. Check it again. Get a little bit more water. Tighten it a little bit. Don't try to over tighten it the first time because if you over tighten it, you might strip the threads. It's only. Those, those threads are very fine and you tighten up something too much and you're going to make it leak. And then your threads, your threads may get bad on this piece here, your, your uh, male threads and your female threads. Okay, you may have to replace this because you tried to over tighten it on this and you screwed up some threads or cross, 
cross-threaded it because you didn't get it on there just right and you tightened it up and then you got a mess of it and you got to replace this this uh, riser piece and the uh, the nut on the back side okay so be careful with that and that's another reason why I put Teflon tape on there in case your threads are old threads and if something's slightly off and if it's you know 15 20 years old the Teflon ta tape may do the trick as well why not put the Teflon tape on there as an insurance policy once and be done with it so that's what I did and it's a good thing I did I'm happy with it it's not dripping had it started dripping now I'd have to pull it all apart put the Teflon tape so just go ahead do things right it only takes a few seconds more to do it right and get your Teflon tape on there What's Teflon tape, you say? It's just this stuff here. It comes, it comes like that. That's what your Teflon tape looks like. And always, you always want to have that ready. You never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> Last but not least, one more tip for you. When you're working under a sink and stuff, when you're storing things, you see, I got, I got toilet paper here right on this right on the bottom shelf. I've got Kleenex right on the bottom shelf. I've got all this other stuff on the bottom shelf. And what I should do is, is measure and see what kind of tubs I could get. And I could put all this stuff in a tub and on the same side. But see, here they got the, uh, the water lines right down on the floor. I don't know why they did that. You know, how much longer would it have taken them, you know, when they built this? To just put those up on the wall it would have been so simple to do and then i could have easily stacked more things down here and put shelves in here uh you know on a little plastic container or something but i'm still going to try to do that if you can get all your stuff in tubs and get it situated away from this don't have a tub directly underneath where your p-trap is and where your your sink valves are and all that kind of stuff then if you ever get a leak whether it be from your pop-up valve uh, leaking on the back side or your nut was cracked or this was cracked or rusted out or your water lines on the wall or wherever started dripping you know this is going to get all wet and it may take you a few weeks before you even realize that you've got a leak underneath your sink if you got all your stuff down underneath the sink in tubs at least you're protecting all your stuff from getting wet okay there's my last tip for you from joe hey well that's all i got for this time but i'll be back with more videos <laughs>